You are watching TFI. Greetings covered in paint splatters because apparently that's the fashion nowadays, boy. Yeah, welcome back to another video where I've teamed up with Autodesk to talk a little bit about the 20 year anniversary of Autodesk Inventor, which is happening this year. And in the lead up to Autodesk University Las Vegas 2019, we're going to talk a bit about the class track that they've put on this year for Inventor to commemorate that 20 year anniversary. They have an extra special lineup of classes, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, 20 years ago in 1999, a certain MCAD application of the solid variety was beginning to frankly make everyone else look like a bunch of wireframe dummies. In response to this, Autodesk began working on their own variant and launched Project Rubicon in 1999, free from any of the AutoCAD code, which up until this point Autodesk had utterly mastered. Rubicon was a from scratch, absolute from the ground up effort to compete in the mid-priced MCAD market. It was later branded as Autodesk Inventor and Project Rubicon was strongly aligned with the crossing the Rubicon theme, making reference to Caesar and his 13th legions crossing of the Italian shallow river in 49 BC against the orders of and in turn declaring war on the Roman Senate in what they considered an act of treason. And scholars maintain that the crossing the Rubicon terminology used by Autodesk was a nod to the Latin word Rubico, derived from the adjective Rubeus, meaning red, which the river was so named as its waters coloured red by mud deposits, a reference to the strong red branding used by the other solid modelling competitor, with the phrase crossing the Rubicon being used as a metaphor that means to pass a point of no return. A fitting mission statement as they embarked to wage war atop the waters muddied red by the red team. Or, or, or maybe not. Or maybe I've just made, made that last bit up. Anywho, Project Rubicon was called to arms in 1999, soon after. Codename Mustang brought us the earliest release that became Inventor. Fast forward 20 years to today and we're rocking Inventor 2020, codename Senna. Named after Ayrton Senna who tragically died at Imola, Italy which, on a global scale, is a mere stone's throw away from the Rubicon River. Anyway, that's how it all started 20 years ago, and to honour the 20-year history of Autodesk Inventor, they have indeed put on a special class track this year at Autodesk University, and let's take a look at a sneak peek of some of the classes that I find particularly interesting this year at Autodesk University, Las Vegas 2019. All right then, so my original plan was to take the classes that have been enrolled at Autodesk University for Inventor this year and then maybe pick 10 of them and talk a bit about them, but there was there's just too many of them. And before I get into that, if you're not entirely sure what Autodesk University is and what the classes are, I've done a video already where I covered Autodesk University London this year and I'll link that up at the top corner. But essentially over the three days that Autodesk University is held, Autodesk schedule a bunch of classes which all happen at the same time. There's hundreds and hundreds of classes going on in different rooms within Autodesk University. And then you can enroll onto these classes. They're usually about an hour long. There's an industry speaker at the front. That could be a, an industry partner, an Autodesk employee, a reseller or a, or a customer who's hosting the class. That person submitted their class idea and then Autodesk sifted through all the ideas, all the proposals and then selected them to be a speaker this year at Autodesk University. So you enroll on their class, it's a classroom environment, you sit down and then you listen to the guy talk or you can participate, there's labs, there's interactive classes, all that kind of stuff as well. And they're on different topics, it could be tips and tricks, it could be new trends that are going on in the industry, how you can leverage Autodesk's tools to help you work better, that kind of, all kinds of different things, but it's essentially an hour of a classroom environment learning from someone who really knows their stuff. So this year at Autodesk University 2019, they had over 250 submissions for classes for Inventor from 205 different speakers, but they had to whittle that down and they've now got 54 classes spread out over the three days that Autodesk University is on this year. So I'm gonna take some of those classes and talk a bit about which ones I find the most interesting and might be the most helpful for my viewers. But that's not to say that any of the classes I don't talk about aren't interesting. It just means I had to pick like a fraction of the 54, which was quite difficult to do. So let's get cracking with class MFG 317090 on Tuesday morning, eight o'clock, held by Mark Lancaster from Synergist. So this one's all about getting the most out of your inventor templates. And the reason I went with this one 
is because I see quite a few people in my comment section in the videos and emailing me and in the Discord area talking about having difficulties with Inventor templates. Inventor templates aren't the easiest things to manage and set up. So any kind of guidance you can get, with, which is gonna help you with best practice solutions around your templates is gonna be of a benefit. So this class is worth sitting on for an hour. Uh, next up is MFG319544-L. Up and running with Inventor Nastran from Wazi Muniz. Waz is my ex-colleague at Symmetry and Waz absolutely knows his shizzle when it comes to anything simulation related. He literally writes the book on simulation. So if you want to know a little bit more about FEA, if you want to just listen to someone who knows exactly what they're talking about and has decades of experience with simulation, then this is a class to sit on. Waz is an absolute stand-up stellar guy and I highly recommend you just you sit on this class if you've got any kind of an interest in learning a bit more about simulation and hearing someone or even engaging with someone who knows their stuff with simulation. And then we have MFG316920, back to basics with Mike Davis, your CAD guru. So Mike is an absolute champ. He's one of the most passionate, enthusiastic guys for anything CAD related that I've ever come across. And this is a back to basics class. If you're looking at the class lineup and you're like, I'm not really sure if I'm at that level yet to be looking at that sort of stuff. I'm still kind of learning my way around the product. Well, this back to basics class is an absolute champion. It's, uh, it's class that he's held across multiple Autodesk universities. He's done it several times before and it's well polished. It goes over numerous different topics, tips and tricks, bullet point areas. And it's just a good way to sort of learn a little bit more about the basics of Inventor rather than talk about the high end stuff that you maybe feel not quite ready to divulge yourself into quite yet. And then there's MFG319459, Tuesday, 9.15 a.m. Preparing your Inventor and Fusion 360 3D models for use in AR, VR and MR, augmented virtual and mixed reality with 3D Studio Max. So this is something that's a bit of a hot topic for me at the moment. I'm doing quite a lot of work in my day job with uh, virtual reality. So a class on how to easily and efficiently port your data from Inventor and Fusion 360 over into one of those uh, extended reality style headsets or environments is something which I find quite interesting. I'm gonna try and catch this class whilst I'm over there. And I am 323065, Ask the Inventor Product Manager panel. So this class is more of a, like a customer engagement style of a class. So the Inventor product team, the guys who are responsible for the day-to-day -day management and development of Autodesk Inventor, host a class for an hour where they engage with you guys, get your feedback, uh, you can shout at them, you can complain at them, you can ask them why things are the way they are and then they can try and give you either a real answer or use the political escape route. It's up to them. But it's the, it's the this is exactly what the class is for. It's to engage with the customers and it's your opportunity to either vent to them with, and be pragmatic about it, be constructive. Uh, don't just have a whinge because you know you had a crash one day and you lost a load of work. It's not really something that can do much about that. But it's it's a good class if you want to help shape the future of Inventor. And next up is I am three two two four four nine, saving time and reducing errors by automating designs with Inventor iLogic. So I picked this one because I get asked on a regular basis all the time. Neil, can you do more videos on iLogic? And the answer is I've never done a video on iLogic, so I'm not going to do more of them. And the reason for that is I can't write a line of code to save my life. I have tried several times installing Visual Basic, Visual Studio, whatever the hell Microsoft Studio thing is called, and I've tried to start learning it. I just don't have the time or the mental capacity to hold a computer programming language up here right now, and it's just something I can't do yet. I, I, I can't, so it, there is a lot of demand for iLogic, it's an extraordinarily powerful module within Inventor, and I'm, I am a little bit ashamed that I'm not able to leverage that, but it's something that I just kind of leave to other people to do. And in my day job, I will pay consultants to write stuff in iLogic or, or any kind of programming language, but if you want to get cracking with it, if you want to learn a bit more about it and hear from someone who's doing it, then this class is going to be great for learning a little bit more about what iLogic can do for you. You're not going to be taught the entirety of iLogic in an hour, that kind of goes without saying, but it's just an insight into what the, uh, the module is capable of. And moving on to I am 320822-L, getting started with a generative design for Inventor users. 
Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. from Matt LeMay and Alessandro Gasso, Autodesk employees, adoption specialists, but not of the birth variety. No, these are generative design adoption specialists. So I picked this class because generative design is one of these emerging technologies which is going to explode at some point in the future. It's kind of just dipping its toe in the water right now and it's becoming a bit more known. It's trying to get its name out there. But in the future, this is going to be big technology. So if you want to know a bit more about generative design and what it can do for you, how you access it, what it's all about, then this class is going to be just the ticket for you, sir. And then we've got MFG 319445. Let's take it from the top iLogic best practices and fundamentals for success. So I've included a second iLogic class in here because it's a big topic. And this one is uh, kind of the best practices and fundamentals. So this one might get a little bit hands on. Uh, and teach you how to get started with it rather than just talk about what it's capable of. So this class seems to be a little bit more interesting when it comes to if it's something you want to do and you're planning on tackling it yourself. So that's uh, Tuesday at 10.30 as well. Some of these classes might overlap with each other. It's one of the dilemmas if you are going to AU, you have to kind of prioritize your classes and choose which one seems to be more interesting than another one that might be scheduled at the same time. And this one stood out for me, actually. This is MFG 322671, Choose Your Own Adventure Inventor. And it's an interactive class. This is, it seems like a class where the guy is going to design something in real time in the class, and then the audience kind of dictates the direction that they go and decision-making that they do along the way for this, uh, this design. So that sounds quite interesting. And I've never, I've never heard of that before. They might have done them in the past, but I've never really come across this yet. So that stood out for me as being something that would be quite interesting to sit on and watch how something is done and designed. And MFG 321419-L, better machine design with Autodesk Inventor Design Accelerators. Uh, this is, uh, the Design Accelerators is something that I, I get a lot of feedback within my video comments area. People wanting to know how to use spur gears, uh, worm gears, how do they do the, the O-rings and suspension springs and all kinds of stuff for the design accelerators. It's a massively powerful, unique selling point to Inventor. And it's something that there's not a massive amount of literature out there for. Uh, but if you can master them, you can be extraordinarily powerful with them. I've done a few videos myself on them, on a couple of them anyway. There is a lot of design accelerators. But if you want to sit down in a class and hear about it from someone who absolutely knows their stuff with the design accelerators, then this class is the one for you. And the last one that I've included is MFG 318699 Cardzilla Returns, fighting with large assemblies in Inventor. Thursday at 2.45, otherwise known as the Graveyard Shift. Because a lot of people have sadly gone home by that point. Uh, Soz Jim <laughs> seems to always be the case. Uh, but this one stood out because large assemblies in Inventor is one of its Achilles heels. It is touted as being very well equipped at handling large assemblies. But if you put them together wrong, then you can have all kinds of bother with large assemblies. So this class seems to be something that might be useful to people who are struggling with absolutely... And by large assemblies, I'm, I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of parts, not you know, a thousand or five thousand. That's kind of the large assemblies that I kind of deal with. So this is a class, if you find that you're struggling a bit with that, then you can ask Jim about it, hear what he's got to say, engage with other people that might be having similar issues to you. Right then, that's my 12 picked classes out of the 54 at AU this year on Autodesk Inventor. The other 42 have been selected by Autodesk on merit, and that doesn't mean they're not very interesting because I haven't mentioned them. They are all special in their own ways. I just had to pick 12. Uh, but if you want to see what the other classes are, mate, and you registered for AU this year, you can go to your AU app and you can see what all the classes are and you can pick which ones you want to enroll on. Obviously, you can only be on one at a time. There's only so many hours in a day. That's the struggle. That's the thing you've got to prioritize. But it's a nice problem to have. Anyway, that'll do it for me for this one. Good luck to all of the speakers this year and their preparations for their classes. Congratulations for being selected and I'll see you all over there this year. Check out the channel, mate, because in the future I've got, over the next couple of weeks, more to do with Autodesk in preparation for AU. A couple more exciting things coming up. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Toodles!